Now, let's jump in the boat again. Uh, this time we're going to head a little uh, north, northwest to Bougainville Island, and here we'll find Carlia Limited. To hear about the copper and gold prospects on the northwest end of that island, please welcome the technical director of Carlia, Peter Batten. Peter. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, Patrick, Andrew, Ron. Uh, you're about to get the poor man's version of um, operating in Papua New Guinea. Uh, we don't have resources, and like New Minko, we're not operating. What we do have is uh, we have a position in Bougainville. Uh, okay, Bougainville, most people in the Australian resource industry know of Bougainville. Uh, very few know of the latest of Bougainville. Bougainville uh, hosted the world's largest copper mine in 1972. Uh, that shut down in 1989 due to, due to uh, uh, social conflict. Um, and which led into a civil war, which was a peace treaty was signed in 2001-2002. Current Bougainville is an autonomous region of Papua New Guinea and will vote in the middle of next year on independence. Uh, the locals are about 95% for independence, but the decision rests with the Papua New Guinea government um, and they have to um, jump a few hurdles before they get to that point. Um, the government, the, the ABG, the Autonomous Bougainvillean Government, is very pro-mining and they see that as a way to underpin the independence of their country. They wrote their Mining Act in 2015 and the regulations in 2016. Um, the difference, it's, it very much looks like the MRA Mining Act, but the difference there is that the landowners own the minerals and not the state. Um, Carlia has been there since March of 2016, where we entered into discussions with the landowners. You have to have a, an agreement with the landowners before you can apply for a licence. The country is under moratorium for applications. And in May 2017, there was a partial lifting of the moratorium in three areas for applications. We applied for licences and in November 2017, we were granted two of four new exploration licences in Bougainville, bringing the total of licences on the island of Bougainville to five. BCL, Bougainville Copper, holds the other licence, uh, which covers the Panguna pit area to the south. Uh, we are in the north. Uh, despite, if you read Business Week this morning, uh, we don't have two other applications on the island. Um, the journalist, I don't know where he got that from, but he got it wrong. This is Patrick's Elephant Country. Uh, these are the projects that surround Missima and Woodlark, and we have one on our island, which was Panguna. They mined 700 million tonne of Panguna in 17 years, and they still have 1.8 million tonnes in resource. So we're going on our elephant hunt, and we're going to hunt an elephant. Uh, the three areas in the other picture are the three areas that were released for licences. The green area in the north is where we have our two, our two exploration licences that have been granted. The, the um, dark red colouring in that geological picture is intrusives. Ours are oligocene to Pleistocene, um, and the whole of Bougainville Island is only 45 million years old, the oldest rocks. The mineralisation is, is oligocene to Pleistocene. Uh, we've got the right date rocks and the right type. There are two licences uh, in the top left, and whilst we, it took us two years to get our licences, or almost two years, and whilst we were doing that, um, we did our desktop study. Um, apart from Rio and BCL, there's been no other work done on the island by anyone else. Uh, it was very difficult to find material, but we were able to source uh, from two locations the raw data for a 1986-87 geophysical survey that was done by the West German government. And that was a precursor to a, a whole of island study done by the Geological Survey of Papua New Guinea. And we were also able to get the raw data, geochemical data from that, and we have the report. So apart from that, there was one um, master's degree study field trip done in the north from the University of Papua New Guinea. So we have all that data and we use that to drum up a number of targets. And the geophysics was reprocessed by Fathom Geo Geophysics who are based in Western Australia. They have a great deal of experience in 
this type of terrain. They are in fact uh, engaged with majors throughout Southeast Asia looking for porphyries based on um, topographical data and whatever uh, geophysical data is available. They took the data, they took the radiometrics to have a look at potassium alteration which is associated with gold and copper mineralisation in porphyries. They took the magnetics which uh, gives us an indication of metal in the system and they also took the NASA 15 metre resolution topographic data and used that to show topographic anomalies in the system. They then put these through their own proprietary algorithms and came up with a ranking system and from that um, ranked all of the anomalies on the island and out of the whole of the data set only 20% of our area is covered by geophysics but we have the number one geophysical anomaly on the island and the number five and the number six. Through our studies and our reports two areas keep popping out and they are those two um, well, I've got a, yeah. They're the, the two um, intrusives that we have, Melly Loop and Rario Puspa. Um, they are coincident geophysical anomalies, they're geochemical anomalies um, and they're geology anomalies. From the geochemical work uh, we know that there is an area called the Upper Ramazon Anomalous Zone. They fit in there every sample taken by Rod Rick Rogerson or Dr Rick Rogerson of the Geological Survey of Papua New Guinea in 1988 uh, is elevated in that area. Um, we have the highest grade samples taken in the north by Rick Rogerson at Rario Puspa and um, the work done by Cipero in a master's program, she identified porphyries and chalcopyrite mineralisation in the system. Her assaying at Rario Puspa had a range of 0 to 4 grams per tonne gold and 0 to 0 0.6 per cent copper. Um, we have been since uh, our licences were issued in November. We've been in there. We've done a number of traverses and we have in fact um, located a, a porphyritic intrusive, a diorite, and it was anomalous. We went back in and it is now, we now have um, our first location to expand on. We've got a 6.37 gram per tonne gold, 0.45% copper assay in a porphyry. Um, it's in an outcrop in a river and we have since gone and picked up another two assays within that outcrop, 0.19% sorry, 0.19 grams per tonne gold and 0.3 gram per tonne gold and 1.1 kilometre away we came up with another 0.9 and elevated copper. These are these numbers in here. So over 1.1 kilometres we have a diorite, an intrusive porphyry and it is showing that it contains gold and it contains copper. What we don't know is how large it is and what we don't know is is that grade consistent through it and if it is would it ever be economical. So we're at the first part of our exploration program but we have located a porphyry with gold and copper in the system. Our process from here is we go back in to determine how large it is and if those two points 1.1 kilometres away from each other are connected and if they are, that could become our first drill program and that decision could be made within the next two months. Um, we're looking for any type of uh, mineralisation but primarily our target is at the moment porphyry coppers. They're large and low grade. Panguna uh, is 2.5 billion tonnes uh, and the overall grade will be just north of 0.3% copper and 0.3 grams per tonne gold but it's economic. Um, that's the company's um, corporate snapshot. Uh, we have two and a half billion shares on issue. Um, we've got a major, uh, we've got 24% of, of our funding comes out of England. Um, and uh, we have a $25 million market cap, even though we haven't got any resources. So um, we think that our next biggest kick will come from uh, the, the commitment to a drill program. As I said, that decision could come within uh, two months, uh, one month to do another field trip inside and, and then the follow up with the assays after that. Um, ah. <laughs> so this is part of the data that we had, um, we put together. This is the other presentation. 
These are the gold anomalies. This blue line is the upper Remazon anomalous zone. Where all the samples on that have got elevated um, results. This is Rario Puspa. We've got a number of gold uh, anomalies. This is Meliloop. We've got lower gold anomalies. But when we come over here, we've got slightly higher copper anomalies. And again, we've got copper anomalies over here. These little black dots here are ge uh, geology anomalies. And when I say geology anomalies, that's porphyry with chalcopyrite in it, epithermal veining, or uh, brecciation zones. So as you can see, the coincident anomalies stack up for Rario Puspa, and we have a few for Meliloop. We also have these other targets. This is Pet Pets in the west. Um, we've got a copper anomaly at Sipai. Uh, these are stream, stream float samples, so they need to be followed up. We also have a rather nice little uh, anomaly, copper gold anomaly in, in the south on the eastern side. So we're well set up for exploration. Uh, we have an office in Booker. We've just got an office in Tinputs. Uh, we, the key to working over there is you have to have a, a good relationship with your landowners. We have, the landowners have their own a landowner association and their own management company. Um, they work with us to, for uh, access. They go ahead educating the local people. This is a country that's been isolated for 30 years. We have two generations of illiterate people and the education and their understanding of what happens in the world is very low. That's the key for our work to progress, is for us to be able to uh, come to an agreement with the landowners. We think that we're very advanced in that, in the fact that we've been working for them, working with them for two years to get to the point where we're able to put an application in for our, um, our licences and they were then granted by the government on the understanding that we had a working relationship with the representatives of the, of the landowners in the position. That's uh, a bit of a blow up there, the rocks on the left, um, they show that they've been through potassic alteration, there's veining, there's interruptions. Um, there's the, that's Tiaviani. Rario is still our number one priority, we haven't been able to reach it yet. Uh, when we went in the wet season, the river was up, we couldn't cross it, and then when we went back the second time, there's a cultural issue that we have to deal with. At Melly Loop, we've also got 0.18% copper. That came from the first uh, traverse into there. Again, um, we have a cultural uh, issue we have to deal with there, and then we actually it's been dealt with in the last two weeks. So we'll be doing another traverse into there. Interestingly about Melly Loop is that uh, the yellow hatching is the projected position of the intrusive and we traverse up the Ramazon River and as soon as we entered into the uh, porphyry uh, position uh, at Melly Loop, all of the samples that we returned were elevated. Only one anomalous, 0.18% copper, uh, and it is river float, so it's saying that we haven't yet found the site, but it sits directly underneath the, ge the geophysical anomaly uh, for that area. So we have 1,700 kilometres of license area to explore. We have uh, Panguna as, a, as a, a model for which to search for. Uh, we've already submitted all our work. We're up to date with everything we're doing. We are in compliance. Uh, we have numerous targets to go for. We've already, we think we may have lucked onto the first one uh, that we will be able to develop past a, an initial exploration uh, project. Um, we will be flying, we've just left the contract for the geophysics. We'll be flying Heliborn Geophysics hopefully by the end of June and that will cover the whole 1,700 square kilometres of our area. Um, we are cashed up for uh, the geophysical survey and potentially for our first drilling program uh, and we find that uh, we think that Bougainville is elephant country. Uh, we hope we've got an elephant. We've seen something grey in the bush we're not sure that it's an, an elephant just yet. So that's Kalia's story. Uh, we think we've got a lot of uh, a future ahead of us um, at 25 million market cap uh, and the drilling announcement if it comes in the, as the next step up that we have. Thank you.